All right, guys, listen up. It is story time. And yes, if you're wondering, this story is 100% true. Do not question it. I assure you that this all really happened. All right. So a while ago, I used to have a restaurant, and this restaurant was actually really popular because I had this awesome chef right here. This guy named is Chef Database. Now, Chef Database is awesome because he can cook an egg in five seconds. That's actually the only thing my restaurant sold eggs. Again, don't question this. All right. So I had two employees, Chef Database, cooking eggs in five seconds, and I also hired a server. So she was responsible for taking orders from the customers. So we opened up our first day, and pretty much this is how it went the server was ready to take orders, and this girl. <laughs> First of all, why does this girl look so sad? I don't know. Maybe she, uh, you know, maybe her boyfriend broke up with her or something. I don't know. But anyway, she was like, I'll take one egg, please. And then my server was like, okay. Hey, Chef DB, we need one egg. So he waits five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. And when it's done, the server brings the egg to the customer. Boom, you're good to go. So she got her egg, she's at the door. Next customer is this little boy. So this little boy's like, hey, I would take one of the eggs. And my server's like, you talk funny, whatever, dude. All right, chef, need one more egg. All right, that'll be five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. All right, you little turd, here is your egg. He's happy, whatever, see you later. So day two rolls around and obviously my restaurant is getting pretty popular because who doesn't love delicious eggs? And I realize that I need to get these customers their orders faster. They're getting a little upset that their orders are taking too long even though my eggs are delicious. So I'm like, what the heck am I supposed to do? And then my grandma's like, oh Bucky, why don't you just hire some more servers? And my like, grandma, please shut up, listen. I sell eggs for a living. This is my restaurant. Do you think I'm rich? I can't afford more servers. So I need to find a better way or a faster way to get these customers their order. So I'm like, you know what? Where is the flaw in my business plan? Well, check it out. Whenever a customer places an order from the server, this server walks over, tells the chef, and he starts cooking the egg. Now, while he's cooking the egg, the server, like a lazy bum, is just sitting there doing nothing, filing her nails, checking her iPhone, whatever. Now, I come up with an idea that says, you know what, why don't we manage it this way? Why doesn't the server take the orders, tell the chef to start cooking the egg, and then what she can do instead of standing around, she can take another order from, say, the boy. And then she can tell the chef to start cooking another egg and boom, check it out. So again, my server has no point of standing here, taking one order at a time and waiting five seconds to go back and take another order. The chef doesn't need her. So instead, what we start doing is that your order, okay, she placed her order. What about you, little boy? What's your order? Oh, an egg too? Obviously, because <laughs> it's the... <laughs> It's the only thing we sell. I guess, uh, you know, she really doesn't need to be asking what they want to eat, but whatever. And she does the same thing for the priest. So she just took three orders, went back, back, back. Now the chef is cooking three eggs at a time. And instead of standing there waiting for one egg to be done at a time, she just tells the chef, hey, chef database, whenever those eggs are done, just let me know. Just give me a heads up and I'll come back and get them. So one, two, three, four, five. Yo server, all the eggs are done. Boom, there you go. So now instead of taking 15 seconds for three customers, she can take orders immediately and the chef can cook all the eggs at once and they each get their eggs in five seconds. What if I had 30 customers? Doesn't matter, they all get their eggs in five seconds instead of 150. Pretty cool. My server is staying busy the whole time. I don't spend extra money on extra servers and it's a much more efficient way of doing things. 
Now, believe it or not, that story has absolutely nothing to do with Node.js or programming. Just thought it was a pretty cool story to tell, so thank you guys for watching. Actually, I'm kidding, of course. The reason that I told you guys that story is pretty much the reason that Node.js is becoming so popular. As you can see, whenever you're making some kind of web app that has to deal with A, real-time data in pretty much applications where speed is important, and B, applications like social networks where you have a lot of requests coming in at once, Node.js is incredibly fast and efficient. So instead of just talking about those eggs, let's go ahead and start learning how this is done in code. Now, of course, whenever we're making a website or a social network, we obviously aren't cooking eggs. That time consuming operation, that five seconds it took for that chef to cook an egg, this would be something like querying a database. Now querying a database and having the database calculate all this stuff, of course, takes some time. So if you had a bunch of people trying to connect your website, and every single client had to wait for the other client before them to get done, obviously it would be a horrible experience, your website would be really slow, and people would never come back. So instead, if we set it up like Node.js, we'll be golden. Alright, so I'm going to have two functions in here. My first function is just going to be called place and order. So this we're just going to pass in the order number so we can keep track of everything. So this is pretty much going to resemble a user trying to connect to your website to, I don't know, like query database, get some kind of data. They want to place an order, they want to get data from your website. So inside here, the first thing I'm just going to make is a little indicator so we can see in the log that this was actually called. So I'll put like customer order and then we'll print out their order number. So again, we're going to be calling this function like, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. We'll say like six or seven times. So every time we call it, it'll say customer. The heck, do you hear that? There's like a random motorcycle driving out. All right. So anyways, every time we call this, it's going to say customer order one, customer order two, customer order three, so on and so forth. Simple enough. Now, after we print out the little indicator saying that this function was called, we need to call one more function and this is going to resemble querying the database. In other words, the example we saw, uh, we'll say cook and deliver food. Now this is going to take one parameter called a callback and let me just say this. Um, I'll be like simulate a five operation. All right. So this function right here would resemble something like connecting to your database, some time consuming operation. So inside here, I'm going to write one piece of code and that is set time out. And of course it takes the callback and just have some time from like um, 1000 to 10,000. If I put 5000 in here, it just means five seconds. So what the heck is this? So again, Obviously, we don't really have a database to connect to, but what's going to happen is after five seconds, it's going to throw your callback. What the heck is a callback? You know in our example, whenever we had the server, and she went and she gave the order to the chef, and instead of just standing there like a lazy bum like she was doing at first, she was just like, hey chef, call me back whenever the eggs are ready, and that way I can go do something else, something useful, something productive. So I'm going to give you my order, go do something else, just call me back whenever that's ready. Much more efficient, and that's what this callback is. It's a bit of code that's going to run whenever your five seconds is up. And you guys are going to see in like half a second what's going on. All right. So obviously, whenever a user places an order, we're just going to print something out, and then we're going to call cook and deliver food. So cook and deliver food. So the reason that I had to explain in the last tutorial that you can actually have functions and pass them in as parameters to other functions is this. This callback is essentially a bit of code that we want to run after five seconds. So we can actually put an anonymous function in here, function, and run some bit of code. So after the food is cooked and delivered, we're just going to say console 
dot log and we'll just log out something like I don't know delivered food um, order and then we will put the order number so again if you don't quite understand exactly what's going on then give me one second and I promise you will by the end of this video alright so now we have to do is just place a whole bunch of orders and I'll just put like a simulate uh, like users um, like web request alright so place an order one and just copy this a bunch of times we'll say like five or six times two three four five six alright so again this is just going to simulate five or excuse me six different users trying to place orders trying to connect to your database or your website at a time now let's run this and see what happens alright all of their orders are placed they all want data five seconds later look at that so check it out querying the database takes five seconds nothing we can do about that it's just a database it crunches numbers some things take time however we had a bunch of users trying to connect to our database and instead of taking five seconds waiting for the next one five seconds we could process all of the requests at the exact same time and then send back all of their data in five seconds so every single user was getting the best possible experience now at first you might look at this program and you start scratching your head because something doesn't look quite right you see we know that computer programs run top down in other words this line of code is gonna complete and then once it's done it's gonna run this line of code once that's done it's gonna run this 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 and this so how is it that when we run this program essentially it looks like all of these are printing out like a millisecond after another because whenever a user places an order here's what's happened it prints out this as we know nothing new and then it hops down and it pretty much starts requesting data from the database now this process takes five seconds alright so if that's still going on in this line of code didn't get done yet then why are we able to hop down to two then three then four then five aren't we still waiting five seconds for the database to be dealt with well that's what confuses a lot of people and that's what I want to clear up this line of code set timeout it's not saying wait five seconds pause the program stop the program for five seconds and then once you're done call back the callback method which just says deliver food what's happening in the set timeout method is this what you're doing is you're scheduling this callback or this bit of code to run in five seconds now just to make that schedule it doesn't take five seconds it's instant so you're just saying hey database do your thing do whatever you gotta do however long it takes when you're done with that call me back in the meantime I'm gonna go on and continue with the rest of the program so do your thing I'm gonna go on handle some more users and then when you're done after five seconds or whatever long operation you take just call back this function so again you're not getting this line of code or point in your program and pausing before going on to the rest of the program you're setting a schedule so again I know it confuses a lot of people but hopefully I was able to explain it if you have any questions at all about anything or if this seems kind of fuzzy right now I am certain in the upcoming tutorials that you guys are gonna catch on to this concept real quick also if you have questions about anything specific then you can just ask me on my forum there are a lot of people there willing and able to help and lastly if you want any of this source code from this tutorial or any of my future tutorials I'm gonna be putting it on my github for free there you go so uh, yeah thank you guys for watching uh, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time